Main takeaway is that this is one of the best cards out there that no one really talks about. Today, we're going to look at the US Bank Triple Cash Rewards Business Card. We'll look at it from three different levels. First one is the base of the card. Level two is some details you need to know. And level three is what the competition looks like. Big favor before we dive into all of this, give this a thumbs up. And if you are someone new here, to consider subscribing. Okay, starting out, one thing I really like about the card is that it's pretty straightforward. You're earning cash back and the rates are pretty good. You're getting 3% back on eligible purchases at gas stations, EV charging stations, office supply stores, cell phone service providers, and also restaurants. Technically speaking, there's no cap for any of these, meaning that if you spend, let's say, $50,000 or $100,000 on each of the categories, you're still getting 3% back. That's pretty crazy because a lot of the other issuers will put caps for a lot of these and maybe it's only up to 50,000 and maybe it's combined. We'll talk about this in part three and you'll kind of see how great this card is. To be fair, technically there is kind of a cap for two of them and that's going to be gas and EV charging. So diving into the terms, if you have charges that are more than $200 for these two categories, then it's only going to earn 1% back. So in theory, there is a cap, but at the same time, you could easily break down your charges and make it less than $200. For normal people, normal businesses, I think that's pretty straightforward. That's not unreasonable. I guess if you are someone driving a truck or something, then that could be more problematic. And my guess is the reason they have this is to make sure that truckers who run their own rigs aren't just putting $1,000 charges each time. On one hand, it does suck for them, but on the other hand, I kind of get it as a business. Still though, if you really wanted to, you could break it down, but might not be worth the work. For EV charging, I kind of feel like they threw that in, or maybe they have it in case you can try to charge other things, and maybe that's more expensive than they would like. In terms of multipliers, I think 3% back with very little strings attached and no cap is amazing. One of the crazy parts is that the card has no annual fee, which doesn't really make sense. And maybe I shouldn't say this, but I feel like they could easily get away with a 95 or 125 annual fee and people who have the card who benefit from those categories would happily keep paying. One of the other benefits of the card is that it does come with a $100 statement credit. You're going to get this credit if you do 11 months of software services. And here they mention FreshBooks and also QuickBooks. We'll cover the terms in about a minute, but main takeaway is that it can be a keeper card for a lot of people who might not spend that much. In theory, it's a no annual fee card. You could just put those purchases on this card to trigger the $100 credit. This is a solid pickup for the long term. On that note, if you do want to learn about this card and you want to support the channel, we do have links on the website, asksebi.com, and down below in the description box. Make sure the links are competitive, but otherwise, huge way to support the channel. So thank you guys in advance. Okay, let's dive into part two, which is going to be the terms. And for the most part, it's going to be just that $100 credit. A lot of words here, but I think the main thing is that you're getting this $100 credit per 12 month period. You're getting it after 11 consecutive months of payments for these services. It's going to be eligible software services made with one of these providers directly. For the most part, pretty straightforward. Reminder that eligible software services are going to be by merchant code, so MCC. Purchases made at a discounted retail store or online retailer might not qualify. Main takeaway is that you would want to purchase directly instead of, let's say, buying a bundle or something at Costco. I guess you do need to weigh that because Costco can be pretty cheap or maybe put a different charge that you can't get a discounted price for on that card. I feel like in today's world with so many SaaS products, it's pretty easy to do this. This means that even if you're a sole prop who has relatively little spend for the 3% back stuff, you could still get value from this card, potentially $100 in value every year just by having it. That's pretty much it for part two, so pretty fast. Let's move into part three. Here we're going to look at some alternatives, and I'd say that there's three main arguments. The first one is going to be if you care about travel. In that case, I guess you could make the argument for the Chase Inc. Cash card, which earns 2% back, technically 2x ultimate reward points. We're using gas for this because I feel like that's a pretty straightforward one, and if you are focused on the other categories, it could be more competitive to use Chase. So for something like the Chase Inc. Cash card for the office supply stores, you get 5% back, and there is a cap there. It gets a bit more complicated. For gas, though, 2x back, and you can technically get about two cents per point if you do travel for aspirational stuff. So 2% times 2x is about 4% return on spend or value that you're getting for your spending. In that case, you have 4% back from Chase potentially compared to three and four is higher. Obviously, a lot of variables depending on what you're focused on. The reason I'm going by pretty fast for this one is if you're someone watching this video, I'm guessing you care more about cash back. If you want to dive into the rabbit hole of the points world, there are a lot of other cards that also have a lot of these categories, but then you have to deal with health and Bonvoy and stuff, which is just a lot more complicated. The second main competitor is going to be if you don't have a lot of spend for these categories. Does it still make sense? On one hand, you could get it as a keeper card given the statement credit and stuff. On the other hand, if you don't want to get too many cards, then I think Capital One is the main competition. 
For something like the Spark Cash Plus card, there is an annual fee, but you're getting 2% back on everything, which just might be more worth it for you. I feel like for a lot of business owners, even if you care about cash back, it might not be worth optimizing as much unless they're going towards travel. Cash back for the most part is relatively fungible and it might make more sense to focus on your business rather than watching a video like this, which is weird to say. Obviously I'm down for it and I like to over optimize anyways, but just food for thought. I'd say that the third major competitor is going to be the Bank of America system, but it is a bit contingent on you having a lot of assets with them. For the Bank of America customized cash business card, you're getting 3% back and it's on the category that you select. Main disadvantage is that the 3% and 2% categories are going to be capped off and it's shared together at $50,000 in the calendar year. Depending on your business, it might be pretty easy to run into that wall. There also is a lot of overlap of that card and this one. So for the Bank of America, you're getting 3% cash back for gas stations, office supply stores, travel, TV, telecom and wireless, computer services, and business consulting services. You do get boosts if you have a lot of assets with them. So if you have more than $100,000, you get a 75% boost. If you want a bit more detail, I'd recommend watching that one. But if you spend, let's say $50,000, you're getting not 3%, but 5.25% because of the boost. In that case, at exactly $50,000, it would make more sense to use the Bank of America because it's 5.25 compared to 3. The fun or the bad part, depending on what you like and don't like, is that there's a ton of variables. So there is a lot of play here. We could keep it pretty simple to do one example. And let's say we only have one category and let's say it's gas. If you have X as the first $50,000 and Y as a spend about $50,000, you can pretty much solve this using math. Break even point doing the numbers is going to be $90,000. This means that when you spend $90,000 above $50,000 on that one category, then you are pretty much at an impasse and it doesn't really matter each way you go. So pretty much 140K, if you spend more than that, then the 3% back here makes more sense. If you spend less, technically Bank of America is a better fit, but just depends on you. So for example, let's say you spend $100,000 on gas. If you use this card, the 3% US bank card, you're getting $3,000 in cash back. For Bank of America, you're getting 5.25% on 50%, and then 1.75%, so 1% with the 75% boost on the next 50,000. Even though that sounds pretty bad, you're getting $3,500 in value here compared to 3,000. But I think you're in a pretty good spot either way. Main takeaway is that this is one of the best cards out there that no one's really talking about. I think you could make arguments for Chase if you care about travel, and Capital One if you have a lot of other spends, and Bank of America if you have very specific amounts of assets and stuff, and I guess levels of spend, but for a lot of people, this is a straightforward 3% back, and that just makes more sense. Assuming that your spend is staying at this level for these categories, this seems like a pretty easy pickup. Again, if you want to learn about cards, whether it's this one or maybe some other cards out there, and you want to support the channel, we do have links on the website, asksebi.com, and down below in the description box. If you made it to this point in the video, then leave a gas can emoji station thing down in the comments below, and I'll try to heart it and also respond to your comment. My question for you is, what are your thoughts on this card? And if you are running it, what has been your experience? Let me know and everyone else know in the comments down below. Big favor, give this a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.